Katie Couric. Welcome I've to learned, The Daily Show. I, I, I have two observations. I've never been so happy to have gone through menopause. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I need to get in touch. I need to get in touch with Kimberly Guilfoyle Speaker Bureau. Right? Right? Two minutes, $60,000? Wow. Oh, that's, that's yeah, quite a thing. Yeah, it was riveting, as we saw. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the book, Going There. You take us through so many aspects of being Katie Couric. You talk us through your eating disorders. You talk us through sexism in the news business and in media. You talk us through the, the difficulties of news and understanding what your role is and your responsibilities as right. a journalist. That's what I liked. You know, we, we live in a world where these days people are afraid to be human, people are afraid to to, to show their flaws, or to show... admit their mistakes. Exactly, you and know. You know, one of the the most vulnerable moments in this book is when you're talking about your interview with Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and you talk about how in the in the in an interview you sat down with her, you asked her about Colin Kaepernick, and she basically so you said, "What is her opinion?" And and to paraphrase, she basically said. I think what he's doing is dumb and, and it was irresponsible. Yeah, or disgusting. Yeah. Or, yeah. And you now had to decide whether or not to put that in the interview after her team called and said she misunderstood the question. Talk, yeah. me, talk me through a moment like that because you're a journalist. You are presenting to the public what has happened, but you also have this responsibility to present what has happened in the most accurate way. How, right. do, you, how do you find that balance? So I was interviewing her about a book she had written. So generally when you're doing that and when you have the opportunity to actually talk to a Supreme Court justice, you try to think of, is there any news of day that you can get their reaction to? So, you know, you have to kind of slip those in because that's really not what you're there to talk to her about. So I was interested in hearing her views about Colin Kaepernick. So I said, what do you think about it? And I think what people misunderstood who reported about this is I put in about two minutes of her response. You know, you have these ethical dilemmas and people, you know, make judgments on a regular basis. Right. They just don't talk about them right. transparently right. as I was willing to do. And so I remember feeling, gosh, what is my obligation? Should I use everything? Should I be careful because part of it was confusing yeah. and I wasn't sure what she meant? So I made a decision and I still wonder if I made the right decision. In retrospect, I probably just should have put the entire statement out and let people come to the conclusion they wanted to. As it was, her office had to issue an apology. So it's not like I didn't run any of it. Yeah. And I, I think I wrote about it because I still question if I did the right thing. And I think that's something that if journalists talk more openly about the decision-making process and how they approach a subject, it would be more transparent and it would be more helpful, I think, to the public. What do you think changed over the years in America specifically? Because you, you, you were part of a generation who was reporting on the news. You were making these decisions and yet there wasn't an erosion of trust in the media and in the news because of these decisions. And yet now it seems like everyone doesn't believe that there is any good intention behind any journalist and what they're choosing to cover. What do you think changed? Well, I think it's the proliferation of media outlets. I think it's more agenda-driven news organizations that are focused and using commentary instead of reporting. Now, if you look at cable and prime time, it's, it's commentary. Right. It's not reporting the facts. It's not like watching the BBC or mm -hmm. PBS mm -hmm. NewsHour. It's people expressing their opinions. And so I think that has eroded trust in the media. Plus, anybody in their basement can throw things on social media and, 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 and then it can basically just spread like right. wildfire. Right. And right. they say what, uh, when it comes to disinformation, uh, a lie goes around the world in a nanosecond while the truth doesn't even have time to tie its shoes. When, when you look at your journey, you've gone back into journalism in a different way. For instance, on your podcast, you, you know, you've been covering really in-depth stories about the, the, the diminishing access to health care for many women around the country. Obviously, right. thanks to, you know, abortion restrictions around yeah. the, the U.S. as a whole. 
Why did you go back into it? And what are you trying to reveal to Americans that they may not already know? So I just did a six part podcast that's being dropped in the next. Uh, the second one is being dropped tomorrow on called Abortion, the Body Politic. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much information coming at us fast and furiously. I've always I really appreciated the opportunity to connect the dots and let people understand sort of the arc of history and how we got where we are. And those are the things I'm just really passionate about. And with modern media, you know, you can say all you want about social media and the ills of social media, but it does allow you to, like brands do, direct to consumer access. Yes. So like when January 6th happened, I called Mary Trump. I think I was the first, if not, you know, I was one of the first, if not the first interview she did. And it's gotten like well over 3 million views on social media. So disintermediation, as they call it, mm -hmm, allows mm -hmm. me to just go directly to news consumers without working for the man. <laughs> <laughs> and. And basically, you know, being the boss of me. And if I want to talk to someone, Trevor, for a half an hour, or even 45 minutes, an hour about gun violence and why nothing has been done to reduce gun violence in this country, I can do it. I'm 65 years old. I'm the boss of me. I run my own show. And I can speak out about the need for sensible gun laws. And I can be an activist. And everyone should be an activist. <laughs> Before, before they have a fourth grader right. killed in his or her class, right. or before they have a grandparent killed buying a quart of milk. Right. Right? Speak out before as opposed to afterwards. Yeah, so I feel incredibly liberated doing what I'm doing. And I have a daily newsletter that, uh, you know, I can turn my lens on the issues that I think are important and really talk about them. So I'm having a ball, basically. <laughs> you can feel it in the book. You can see it in your smile. Thank you so much for joining me on yeah, the show. Yeah, great to see you. Congratulations on everything. Thank you, Trevor. There's everything. There's the podcast. There's the book. There's the Instagram lives. Katie's memoir, Going There, comes out in paperback June 28th. And be sure to check out the podcast as well.